I think what this report shows is that there is a significant gap between the rhetoric and the reality of leveling up. You know, we're three years on from a promise from this government that, you know, they were elected on a promise to level up the country, yet despite that time, what have we seen? Well, we've seen 18, mil- 18 billion, sorry, cut from plans from Northern Powerhouse Rail, for example. At the same time, we've seen a new Elizabeth line, effectively Crossrail opened in London. So the question remains, when are we going to see the levelling up the north of England and regions like it actually need? And the PAC, I think, was particularly concerned about the methodology used to allocate money. Long-standing civil service rules seem to suggest that it's the prosperous areas that get more because there's higher productivity, there's more economic return. Boris Johnson said he is challenging that methodology, but it doesn't seem to be filtering through yet, does it? No, it doesn't seem to be filtering through. And and that's really problematic because you look at the places which need to be levelled up the most and naturally they're going to be the places which at the minute perform worse on those indicators. They're going to be less productive because, for example, local people there don't have the ability to access the skills and training they need to participate in high productivity, high value jobs. So the methodology itself, what we need to be looking at is where is the need most acute? And that should fundamentally be the key criteria, key criteria that drives the government's level of agenda. Now, IPPR North's been around for quite a long time, Jonathan. It's, it's a very well-established think tank. What's your elevator pitch to the government? What, the gov- what should the government be doing to put levelling up to turbocharge it post the pandemic and get some actual outcomes that can positively impact people's lives? Well, it's two key things, really. First of all, it needs to put significant investment in this agenda. You look at what other comparable countries did to close their regional divides. The best example of this is the divides that Germany had when East Germany reunited with West Germany. And you're talking about billions of investment year after year. We need to move beyond those small pots of money and actually see that scale of investment in the levelling up agenda. Secondly, and this point is really crucial, the government needs to let go to level up. And what we mean by that when we speak about that is putting decision-making power in the hands of local leaders and the communities they represent so that they can actually take more of these decisions around levelling up and decide where some of this money is spent. Because we can't expect civil servants in Whitehall, as good as they are at their jobs, to possibly understand the needs of local area like those local leaders do. So it's really about transferring power to and making sure we're not hoarding power as well as resources in Westminster and Whitehall.